The role civil society plays in driving all things like just, inclusive, inclusivity, um, green and sustainable future for our European Union is pivotal. Um, we've seen great change even in the last 18 months with the rise of the pandemic that has stopped the entire world in its tracks. Um, we've, we've seen organizations um, come, uh, come forward and call for and demand supports for our frontline workers, uh, for mental health organizations, uh, for youth organizations that um, seem to have been lost in, 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 in the chaos of this pandemic. Um, we've also seen, uh, even before the pandemic, the impact Brexit. So one country deciding to step away from the European Union and all that it's for um, and step into their own solidarity, uh, removing and impacting the constituency where I represent Midlands Northwest, dare I say, the most. Um, but what we have is, with all of that, is immense opportunity to continue to work with and support civil society groups who are and have been for generations ensuring that the social infrastructure is as much a part of our future in the European Union as the economic one. Um, in 1973, when Ireland joined, it was uh, to join, uh, we had to remove the marriage bar. That wasn't called for just because the European Union decided uh, that was something we had to do. That was called for by civil society organisations wanting equality uh, and justice for women of all ages for generations to come. So they've played a pivotal role in the future of a European Union. And now with um, the, the post-pandemic era we will live in and we will develop and shape together, um, the fact that equality is still not uh, equal and felt throughout the European Union, indeed the world, um, and the fact that we have great challenges and opportunities with climate change, um, digitalization, um, the development of even our social infrastructure more, and I'd be calling for more mental health supports for all ages and, and for all communities. We still have a hell of a long way to go in, in creating that just inclusive society, but we are all the richer because we have had civil society driving us to be more ambitious, more innovative, uh, and look beyond the conversation, the negotiations tables that uh, we have found ourselves in as political leaders and policymakers to make sure all those that live within the EU is represented and represented to the best uh, degree that the European Union was devised from. The challenges and opportunities civil society face and uh, and then looking at what the EU uh, is doing in response to them. I mean, when we look to the European Union, we often uh, call uh, for funding and more additional uh, supports and resources uh, at, at very grassroots levels. And that has to happen. Um, but. I guess as someone who is a young European uh, within one of the institutions, very honoured to represent uh, the Midlands Northwest constituency, the, the EU does so much more than just fund. Uh, it's also about sharing best practices. It's also about bringing key uh, stakeholders and idea makers together um, in the institutions, in our communities and making sure we're learning from one another. It's about growing that network. I think uh, the likes of the wheel do it incredibly well because you're understanding and learning what's happening in the West of Ireland to what's happening in, uh, in, in the East of Hungary. Um, and vice versa, north, south, east and west. And that's what's really successful about the e European Union moving in uh, uh, in a block of solidarity. Um, there's a number of challenges in terms of, uh, you know, a country like the United Kingdom stepping back uh, because of Brexit. Um, and again, linking in the funding piece here, just removing their, uh, their pot of, of input uh, certainly puts... Uh, other countries, uh, and, and more importantly, organizations like civil society groups um, further down the funding stream opportunity. Um, and it also, we see other challenges where uh, we see countries like Poland and Hungary rolling back on what many 
uh, and what what many have fought for, uh, and what has been the foundation, the cornerstone of the European Union around LGBTQI rights, uh, Roma communities, traveler community members, women's issues. We have a number of countries who still have yet to sign up to the Istanbul Convention. We have uh, an anti-discrimination directive that has been held in the Council since 2008. Um, and w- when we see that, and we see organizations calling uh, to make sure institutions like ourselves and other member states are really driving forth in one uh, moving ship, uh, then I can understand one of the greatest challenges is uh, the, the the disconnect people feel uh, and organizations feel. Um, but with every challenge comes immense opportunity. Um, I see uh, huge support in how we are talking about the Green Deal and digitalization, how we are even talking about mental health now because of the pandemic. Um, and, and in particular, take into the fact the Green Deal, uh, each one of our commissioners, each one of our countries now as parliamentarians, we are being held account by citizens, by civil organizations to make sure every vote we make and every conversation we have always has that common thread of the Green Deal, working for our climate, protecting our biodiversity, and making sure uh, citizens and civil organisations are at the forefront of innovation research support. Um, And I think when we talk about the challenges and opportunities, we look at the social infrastructure piece, again, something that has been gifted uh, year in and year out since we as a country have joined the European Union um, uh, from civil society. Again, that's so Social infrastructure piece uh, is is where I feel taken in the Green Deal, digitalization, the fact the pandemic is now making making us be more innovative and ambitions for regions like Midlands Northwest in in Ireland um, and how we are making a more equal society for an affair, a fair European Union. So with everything, I think there is challenges depending on what how, how you're looking at the glass half full or half empty. I certainly know as a young representative, as a young European, as a young gay woman, I'm really excited for our country playing a, a, a pivotal role in the way we talk about the climate uh, and the way we are moving towards uh, cutting our carbon emissions and being net zero uh, by 2050. I think that is extremely ambitious. I certainly would be calling for it sooner um, and working with civil societies to make sure that connects is happening at the very grassroots level because ultimately everything we do in the European Union has to be done with the lens of of our citizens uh, in in our hearts and our minds um, because otherwise the European Union framework, the reason why it started, uh, will uh, will lose its impact. And and I don't think any European, any European country uh, wants that to happen. This is probably one of the most um, excited pieces I, I, I am, I'm seeing uh, and I'm working towards with my team uh, here in the European Parliament is civil society engaging in the EU and, and why should they? I mean, when I ran in 2019 uh, as a first-time candidate, um, as a young gay woman living in the west of Ireland, again, the, the most westerly peripheral of, of the European uh, Union, um, one of the biggest things that kept continuously coming up the doorstep and work speaking with young and old um, citizens was the fact that what goes on over there and uh, and you know why what are the benefits of, of of us being there and what really can you do for our communities and and, and my family and uh, and and my school or my business and and this is where I believe is is the ultimate um, space that the European Union can grow into. So on the Conference on the Future of Europe is a great uh, uh, innovative uh, space for social and citizen dialogue. So again, working with civil society organizations, speaking with uh, members right at the grassroots level through town halls, um, through online and social media. Again, just talking about uh, what it is that we see, how how ambitious are we going 
going to be going forward in the future uh, of our European Union. Um, what does our European look like in, in 5, 10, 15 years' time with the influx of uh, great modern technology, with the fact that r- rural areas and regional development is now at the forefront and priority of many uh, European governments? Um, the impact will have on mental health uh, through initiatives like the European Year of Good Mental Health that me and many of my colleagues are driving forth. What will um, the I look like, uh, a youth organization, a youth conference in, in the coming years? And it was great to champion the eye on the edge in Galway some uh, some weeks back where we really heard from young Europeans uh, versus just hearing from a few who engaged in Erasmus+. Plus. There's so much more to the European Union um, for our young people and it, hearing their voices, hearing the civil, civil society voices come, come to the fore is ultimately what democracy wants um, and working together to build the so- social infrastructure to create better dialogue around our climate, um, protecting our biodiversity and what digitalization can do to help improve our lives and move forward as a really, really strong, successful and ambitious European Union. Um, I hope within all of that, I covered my why. Um, And just to iterate, you know, what we've seen over the pandemic was some countries like Poland and Hungary deciding to uh, become nationalistic and become quite conservative in their views around what a European looks like. Um, and we see rollbacks on uh, on protections on LGBTQI communities, on marginalized communities, on women. Um, and it's it's equality is hard fought, but quickly lost. And I think when we talk about how civil society can engage and why should they, it is through the continuous improvement, looking at the generations coming behind us and making sure the European Union, that they are growing up and living in and working in and uh, further, uh, further promotion and pushing is one of ultimate ambition um, and that we're leaving this place, the European Union, our world, uh, our individual countries, our regions and our communities a hell of a lot richer than when we uh, when we took over. (laughs) 